Welcome back to our homestead, everyone. I cannot believe that this crept up on us so fast here in Texas, and I am scrambling to finish something before it happens. Let's go. So of course, that's a freeze which considering a week and a half ago it was 94 in the middle of the day is absolutely crazy. And I know a lot of you in the north are saying, hey, Texas guy, relax. You don't need to worry about this too much. You don't know what a freeze is. Well, I grew up in Michigan. I absolutely know what you go through. It's different here in Texas, of course, but I still need to get everything buttoned up. Now I'm gonna walk you around the property and show you everything I need to get winterized. And hopefully this helps you kind of lay out what you need to think about winterizing as well when that cold weather just sneaks up on you like it has us. Okay, first things first is our rainwater reclamation. Since you saw these tanks go in on the last video, we got two great rains and there's a decent amount of water in the tanks. Now the tanks or the water in the tanks won't really freeze, but these pipes down here will. So I need to get these covered up. Next thing are hoses. I've got hoses that I need to drain that are all over the property, in the garden, next to the house, in the orchard, here next to the barn. I have to lay those out and just let them drain out. If they're detached from the spigot or hose bib, you should be okay because the expansion of water in the hose itself should push out the end with no problem. Now my cat decided to have a fun time and tear apart all of my pipe insulation here in the barn. So I need to redo all of that. Here's another one, chicken waterers. I need to replace all of our current waterers with the heated ones and make sure that none of that water is freezing for those chickens. So winterizing equipment. I do not specifically have to do this right before a freeze. And in fact, I don't do it at all down here in my zone. What I do is exercise my equipment. So anything that has gas in it and is a small engine, I just start it about once a month for just an exercise. And that prevents any issues with uh, freezing or whatever in the fuel or water vapor freezing, whatever it is, it's always worked for me down here and I never have a problem with it. But if you live in a different area, you may wanna drain your gas tank and completely winterize your small engines. Now, as you can see, we've got these Bard Rocks and Rhode Island Reds in these open air coops and they do have shelter from the wind. That should be sufficient for them in the winter time because both of these breeds are very cold hardy. Now I'm going to get comments about you shouldn't leave your chickens out. You should put them in a nice warm hut or whatever. That's not the case. Chickens are fine in the cold weather. These guys have been in the snow before, so it's not that big of a deal. However, on the end coop over here, I do need to put a little bit better of a windbreak and I will be doing that. But that doesn't need to be done today either. Now, this is going to make me sad. My tomatoes have come back with a vengeance once the weather cooled off from that 100 degree heat and they have flowers all over them and small tomatoes. Unfortunately, these are outside. Now I can throw some sort of uh, greenhouse plastic over them during the night. I may do that. But anything here in the garden that is not a winter vegetable is probably not going to survive the freeze. So here's our sweet potato patch. Now the key with sweet potatoes is if you cannot dig them out of the ground before the first freeze, then you can just simply chop off the leaves and leave the potatoes themselves in the ground. But if you leave those leaves on and they die, disease will very quickly get into those vines and get down to the potatoes, ruining the potatoes. So if you cannot dig them up, just chop back all the vines and obviously remember where your potatoes are and then you can harvest them later. That is one of our big jobs today. So here we are at the greenhouse and of course there are things in here that'll be killed off really quickly by the cold like our beans and our eggplant. But that's the beautiful thing about having a greenhouse is I can close it up and I've got a small propane heater that I can put in there to extend the season for everything in there. We have so many fall beans I need to pick these so we don't lose them. And look at all these beautiful eggplants. I need to get these out of here just in case I'm not able to keep these warm enough. And oh, I'm gonna lose some of these flowers. I've got flowers everywhere. I hope I can keep them warm enough to get some more eggplant off them over the next month or so. 
So friends, the only thing you have to worry about having a greenhouse in the winter time in a zone like mine is extreme temperature fluctuation. So if we're 60 in the middle of the day to 65 degrees, it'll be 95 to 100 inside of the greenhouse. And what that'll cause you to have to do is to come out and open the greenhouse every single day, unless you have some sort of automatic venting system, which we'll think about in the future, but we can't swing it right now. But of course, it's still a blessing to have this thing. Now, something that might be unique to us, but you might have it as well, is irrigation lines all over your property. We've got a couple down here near the road. We've got one over by the solar panels and we need to insulate those. So what we did is we built these little boxes and they've got some rigid foam insulation on the inside. But as you can see here, that doesn't always work. This is one that we had to repair that burst last winter and it had the insulating box on the top of it. So it was just too cold. And this PVC that is run here is quite old. It was put in over 20 years ago. So I will probably additionally wrap this with some reflective bubble wrap and then put the top back on with that uh, one inch rigid foam insulation on it. Now this is the dog and cat watering station back here that stays on all winter. This bucket is completely insulated and I actually do have a heat tape on the pipe in here. So if I need to plug it in, I can. But the reason I can do that here and not out at those other irrigation points is because this one is right next to the house. So I can't drag cords out to every single one of the 20 irrigation points around the property. And then of course is our dog cage. Now. Our dog is an outside dog. He's a farm dog and he's got a long coat and he's been outside his entire life. So I don't want to hear about it in the comments. He's perfectly well taken care of out here. He has a heated bed, another heater, and we wrap his entire cage in this one inch rigid foam insulation. We also block all of the wind that can get in the cage with various methods. So he's perfectly warm and cozy inside with his blankets and everything in the winter time. The only time he came in was during that nasty storm that Texas had a few years ago where it was two degrees. So he obviously came in the house at that point. What do you want to tell everybody? You want to tell them, I'm fine. Look at this nice, beautiful coat. It keeps me so warm, right? You want to look at the camera? He doesn't want to look at the camera. Okay, friends, that's all we have going on. The temperature is dropping fast and I need to get to work, especially on those sweet potatoes and that greenhouse. Now go check out these videos right here, which is our entire series about how we put that greenhouse together by ourselves. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.